Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Oklahoma City. I'm Marshall Cycliffe in the booth with Jacob Van Lunen, and we're ready for modern. It's round number four. Let's head down to David Ochoa versus Chris Finnell, and it looks like they've kicked things off here. JVL Finnell starting things off with Gitaxian Probe, and he sees Roman Splinter Twin and Lance. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, a hand he's probably pretty excited to see from uh, David Ochoa. It's not a uh, super powerful hand. He doesn't necessarily have the turn four kill. He could draw into it off that rebound, but uh, it looks like he uh, he's going to get to cast another cantrip here. Then uh, his goal here, uh, for those of you not familiar with Pyromancer Ascension, I'm intimately familiar with this strategy. Oh, good. I'm glad, because this um, is a very tough deck to play. Yeah, this is... Uh, a deck that I, I know and love. I think I was uh, I was definitely on the ground level with that card. So uh, what he's going to try to do is uh, get two counters on Pyromancer Ascension and then essentially just win the game the second he casts a card that draws any card. Just draws some amount of cards. Things like Manamorphose, uh, it becomes a ritual, creates four mana when you cast it, and draws you two cards. Now, right now, Ochoa does not know what his opponent's on, right? He's seen Steam Vents, Serum Visions, Gitaxian Pro. Yeah, he could be Grixis Control. He could be, you know... Splinter Twin. Splinter Twin. He could be some young Pyromancer aggro deck with Delvers. He could really be just about anything at this point. There are a lot of decks that have that shell. Well, now that changes he knows. it. <laughs> yeah. Now, the question is, can Ochoa do anything about the, the turn to uh, Pyromancer's Ascension here? Um... I don't think so. I mean, depending on what's in Fidel's hands, uh, David Ochoa could lose on the following turn. Wow. The remand makes it a little less likely, but uh, I think it's very unlikely that uh, Fidel does not win on turn four through some amount of counter magic. Okay. Well, we'll see what he can do here. The Pyromancer Ascension has no counters on it so far, but he's got two different spells in his yard, so he can start working that upwards. And Ochoa's going to play a Scalding Tarn. And just ship the turn back here. So Chris Pinnell kind of running rampant so far. Uh-oh. There's a Serum Visions right off the top, so that's going to get a counter on it. Yeah. So far, so good. I think. Tick-tock. And he's going to get that counter whether the Serum Visions resolves or not. One nice thing about Remand against an active Power Mancer Ascension is that you can counter the copied spell. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't go back to their hand. Mm. And you get to draw the card. Uh, the thing is, when your opponent's double spelling you, <laughs> you, you still don't really yeah. feel like you're getting ahead. Yeah, well, that's still a nice little interaction. All right, so Ascension has one counter on it. it looks like he has a Thought Scour, too. So uh, I'd be very surprised if he didn't just go ahead and cast that right now. Uh, just the opportunity to hit that third land and then start doing very, very crazy things. Seems too good to pass up. Thought Scour, of course, also putting a few cards in his graveyard. Oh, he's There's got also very, very little too. value to, s to waiting to your opponent's turn to use another end step. You don't really get much out of that. He looks like he he's going to upkeep it. Okay. Just right. wants to make sure it resolves and punishes Ochoa. Oh, I think he's end stepping it in response to the Tarn. Ah. So he didn't want it to get remanded. You're correct. Or, or so mana I leaked or whatever. Seems reasonable. All right. Now, he hit a pass in flames in a desperate ritual off of it as well in his graveyard. So more more fuel potentially for the fire later on. And I think he has a desperate ritual in hand. Oh no, does he really? Yeah. So that's gonna turn on Ascension uh, and if he's if he's able to resolve the desperate ritual, which uh, seems unlikely here, I think it's going to get remanded. Now what do you think of this choice to bring Storm deck, the Pyromancer Ascension deck? Uh I mean it's very, very good. Uh, against the matchups that it's good against. It's, it almost seems unfair uh, when you're playing the deck. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing against green-black X strategies, things like Jund, things like Junk, uh, things that combine at Rep Decay with targeted discard, it almost feels unwinnable. The matchup is so bad. I, I, I tried so hard to make Pyromancer Ascension work in Modern on so many different occasions and uh, just found it was too difficult for me to battle through uh, what all that Junk and Junt had to offer.
And now uh, just going to scribe it with Serum Visions. Uh, so I guess he just left those two on top. Interesting. And uh, are there any rituals in hand here for Chris at this point? All right. Faithless looting plus a copy. And here we go. So, so this begins. is where things get very bad for David Ochoa. Yeah, so now he's drawing two, then he discards two. His graveyard's going to grow a little bit. Uh, the idea is that uh, eventually, this is turn three, by the way. Um, oh, no, this is turn four. Right. Um, he is going to uh, hit uh, like a big spell. Uh, Pass no flames. Mm -hmm. and Which he's he got one in his yard already as well. Just go through. So he really needs to hit some rituals. Uh, it looks like he has a desperate ritual in hand. And just start making a bunch of mana. Yeah. He just drew four, discard one. Ooh, he's going to pass, gonna pass the turn. Through. Doesn't have the, uh -oh. the two mana to make stuff happen. Receiver Exarch, though, and for David Ochoa. And he's going to tap down the mountain. That's it. Yeah. And he makes him show it to him, but Splinter Twin is going to get the job done. Now, we kind of rushed through that because the players knew exactly how that was going to go, but Ochoa made infinite Exarchs and killed him. Yeah, so what happened there is like Chris Fennell, uh on his turn three uh, was not able to activate that Ascension and uh, then had to spend turn four turning it on. That was, by the way, an incredibly slow draw. From Fennel. Like if you can't kill your opponent dry on turn four with Power Master Ascension, you, your draw Active. is very bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump over and see what Justin Cohen and Brian Kowal are up to. It'll surprise nobody that Justin Cohen, who knows him, that he's on Amulet. This is uh, the deck that he got second at the Pro Tour with. Yeah. I mean, that uh, started his uh, season that uh, propelled him all the way to Rookie of the Year. Mm -hmm. Totally. Now, Brian Kowal, you know, we don't see him out that often at GPs. Can you give us a little little background on who Brian is? So Brian Cole is uh, known amongst like old school magic pros as one of like the greatest deck builders of all time. Uh, he's somebody who has some really interesting ideas about constructive formats. He sees things in an interesting way. And uh, Brian Kowal is uh, he, he's known for designing decks like Boat Brew. Anybody remembers Boat I Brew? I remember Boat Brew. Yeah, that was that was Brian Kowal. I think it's probably the most recent one that was a big deck. Yeah, so that was a long time ago. That was yeah. right. That was when I first came back. Okay. It was like what yeah, yeah. 2010 that's, or something. That's the thing is, Kowal's Co biggest decks have mostly been like way back when. Okay. He just requalified for the Pro Tour, Brian Kowal, and now he's planning on going to a whole bunch of Grand Prix. Uh -oh. And he's going to try to make something happen this year. So BK we're watching. Back? Yeah, we're watching BK right now. A BK may be like a thing this year. All right. Well, this could be the tournament that sets him on the right path for that. You can see that he's fallen down to seven life, but is beating down pretty well here. A couple of plant tokens, it looks like, for Justin Cohen off of that colony garden, which he's, uh, looks like he's replayed at uh, a time. You know, if Kowal is able to untap with Knight of the Reliquary in play, that's very powerful against an amulet deck because he can just tap that Knight of the Reliquary and uh, go search up something like Ghost Quarter, or I'm not sure if he has access to Tectonic Edge, but uh, it's very strong. Now, we, we also, by the way, did a deck tech with Brian Kowal, which we'll be showing today, maybe even tomorrow as well. We've got some pretty sweet deck techs lined up for you guys at home. And uh, yeah, and Brian was one of them. And now uh, instead of... Uh, mm. He just hit back-to-back -back Liliana's off of his Dark Confidant, so he's down six, six life from when we first came in. He's down to four. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. He's got a scavenging new sitting there that maybe can get him some life back. Actually, I don't see any creatures any floating around. Guys in the yard. Yeah. This but when you're, when you're just drawing cards uninhibited by from a Dark Confidant, it's usually pretty good for you. Now, he's got Justin down to 12, but Justin does have those two chump blockers available. Yeah, Justin may just be able to get him with... Uh, Confidant. Then again, Kowal could probably just kill his own Confidant at this point. I mean, he has plenty of you yeah. know, cards in hand. Well, it looks like only two, but he's definitely drawn multiple cards off this Bob now. All right, so Stirring Wildwood's going get, to get ready to rumble, and rumble it does. 
This is an attack for seven as it currently sits. Cus Justin Cohen's down to 12 life. It looks like he might cash in one of these uh, plant tokens here yeah. to soak up three of the damage. So he's only going to take four. He's going to go down to eight. And Kowal's just going to pass the turn back. Yeah, Kowal kind of closing in on victory here. Um, or death. Or death, depending on, uh, you know, Yeah, he has more than two cards. I think out. he has maybe four cards in his hand, as it turns out. Okay. It did look like two sitting, but I, I think he's got four-ish. Looks like Justin Cohen uh, <laughs> should play Land of Bass. He's going to... He has Primeval Titan in hand, but uh, he doesn't have the requisite six mana to cast it, so... Oh, well, now he does with the Amulet Trigger. Yep. And this Summer Bloom can allow him to make a lot of mana. He's going to cast it right now. There it is. Summer Bloom. I mean, Brian can look at his hand all he wants, but just the white mana of. I mean, it's not, it's not really the end of the world here, though, for Brian. Yeah, because Brian can just search up Ghost Quarter with uh, another Relic Quarry, and uh, he can use that to, uh, to kind of interrupt the combo of Justin Cohen. It looks like he's going to have to do that pretty soon because here's Masuva. Yeah, well when when Justin searches with the the uh, primeval titan, I think that's when he's got to do it. I mean, so he's activating now, but I don't know if he's going to go ahead and uh, and actually ghost quarter. Actually, ghost quarter. He'll, he'll get the ghost quarter, but he might not use it right away. No, he is. He's going to use it. Okay, interesting. So he's going to use it on the Vesuva, which means it doesn't get to go back to hand here because he did copy the Simic Growth Chamber, right? He did. And uh, now, though, Justin does have uh, the man of the Primeval Titan. This might have been a little bit of a mistake from uh, Brian here. Right, because now Justin can just cast Primeval Titan with the six mana that he has there and He's he can search up uh, Strongholds and, yeah. uh, and start to go off. Yeah. yeah and just Go for it. All right. Well, let's jump back over. We'll, we'll let Justin Cohen do his thing. We'll keep you updated on how that goes. But we're going to jump back over to our main match where we've got David Ochoa and Chris Fennell here. And uh, things are underway. Once again, a Gitaxium Probe makes our life a little easier. And that's going to show David Ochoa's hand there. And now, uh, very traditional We'll get that graphic switched over. Post-sideboarded uh, uh, hand for a uh, Grixis Twin deck. Uh, post board, it's pretty rare that Splinter Twin is really trying very hard to combo you. I think in this matchup, they probably are, but uh, lots more control elements coming in. Uh, we see that spell snare there. That's going to be difficult for Fidel to fight through. Hmm. I mean, spell snare is uh, an interesting card, uh, especially in this matchup, because you, you don't really have that many ways to counter a spell snare. Like you you can't afford the slots in your deck. Your cards have to just keep can tripping through. So you really need, just need to find enough Pyromancer Ascensions to just power through them. Which means a lot of extra time for David Ochoa to Splinter Twin or just get a beatdown plan going with some two-powered flyer or whatever. Yeah, I mean, he may just you know attack with Snapcaster Rages for yeah. victory this game. Is that a defense grid? That in, uh, is a defense grid, and that whoa. that's you know part of the plan. For sure. Shields go up. See, does he find that land he needs? He does. Faithless looting for Fennel. Ochoa says, yeah, sure. He did find the land. Gets rid of a Desperate Origins. That one's easy. Because he gets half of the value of it back anyway. Looks like he's considering getting rid of the Thought Tower. Your defense grid's uh, an interesting sideboard choice here. What does it do? Uh, spells it, it your opponent plays cost three more yeah. on your turn. On your turn. Yeah. 
to kind of manually sell their spells. Or your turn. Yeah. A card that doesn't pop up that often. But uh, when when you're kind of just, uh, you know, when you're a solitaire deck, yeah. as Pyromancer Ascension kind of is in many ways, uh, Defense Grid is very good at letting you play solitaire. Indeed. Of course, we know that David Ocho has Spell Snare in hand. And uh, it's very unlikely that Defense Grid is going to resolve through Spell Snare. Well, looks like uh, Chris may have just found another copy of Defense Grid in his top two from this uh, Serum Vision scribe. Wear and tear. I see that. Hand. Interesting. Very interesting. Can I guess use he that has to break uh, up the combo. Yeah, he has a, a copy of Sacred Foundry in his deck, so he, he can tear. He can tear. All right, passes the turn back to Ochoa. Let's see what the Ocho has lined up for us here this turn. Probably not a lot. Yeah, land. Good. Passes the turn back over to Fennel. And Fennel's just going to do nothing here. And let him play a land. Yeah, he, he knows about that spell snare, so... Maybe he wants to try to cast uh, you know, multiple defense grids on the same turn. Maybe is his plan. <laughs> there it was. We had to draw that one first, so... I see. Oh, he's going to go for a for pyretic ritual. I like this bait here because if he's able to get uh, Ochoa to use Spell Snare on just a uh, pyretic ritual, it's a pretty good spot for him to be in. Uh, I'm not sure how much experience David has playing against Pyromancer Ascension, but uh, a cold ritual is usually not what you want to be countering with a Spell Snare. Okay. There are just too many valuable cards. Like even uh, you, you want to be countering Pyromancer Ascension with Spell Snare. Uh, you want to be countering uh, kind of the card that they're going into with that. Dispel is a good one to get out of your uh -huh. hand because Dispel, really, there, there are only so many targets for that card. All right, so he, he does decide to use a Dispel here. That also effectively taps out Fennel currently. Is just He's only got the one mana left over. Oh, he's going to cast something with it. Thought Scarry. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about Goblin Electromancer. It's the other one you really want to spell there. Is uh, Pyromancer Ascension and uh, Electromancer really uh, let the deck go off? That's the thing about uh, the newer Pyromancer Ascension decks don't necessarily need Pyromancer Ascension in play really? to go off. They can just uh, a good old-fashioned storm out. Yeah, they can just Goblin Electromancer play a whole bunch of rituals, then uh, use Past and Flames play a whole bunch more rituals. While you're doing that, you're also drawing a ton of cards. Yeah. And uh, Electromancer makes your uh, your cards like it makes your metamorphosis into a ritual. It also you know it's drawing you card. Very very strong with a card like Desperate Ravings. Ooh, thoughts he's off the top for Ochoa. He's got that watery grave so he can cast it too, and there it is. Now this is going to be interesting for for David because he's going to get a chance to really get a feel for well, what do I need to hold on to these things for. Yeah, so right now the important cards in Chris's hands are the, the two defense grids. Uh, you mean the one defense grid? I think that's a pair of defense grids. <laughs> I'm just wondering <laughs> if he's going to take it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's likely that one's going to be discarded to this thought season. Right. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, you know, Ocho might have another plan. Yeah, maybe Ocho has, like, an offensive plan. Yeah. So, oh, I can get him to, like, tap out this turn to resolve defense grid, which will give me an opportunity to combo or something. Yeah, there you go. That's We saw him combo him just right on time, turn four. Yeah. yeah. So one thing about the Ascension deck here is that you mentioned it, you, you referred to it as a solitaire deck earlier. Yes. You know, we, we call that a goldfish deck. And yeah, yeah. It's, all of its slots, especially game one, are just about it. 
Like they, they don't reach out and kill your creatures. They don't mess with your board. They don't really mess with your hand. They don't count your spells. You're just, you kind of get free reign to be alive and do what Ochoa did. And if, if you are alive, okay, looks like he's just going to, he took what, Manamorphos there? And he's going to take Probe. So he stripped his hand thanks to Snapcaster. Yeah, and see now, Fennel, even if he resolves the defense grids, his hand doesn't do anything at all. He just drew another one. <laughs> Three of a kind defense grids in his hand, Jake. It's a lot of, it's a lot it's of defending. It's a lot of defense, yeah. They stack up, right? They do stack up. So any spell would cost nine extra mana. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of the things you need when you're playing Power Mancer Ascension is spell density. Mm. So siding in a whole bunch of cards like Defense Grid uh, can be problematic because if you draw too many of them, suddenly your deck doesn't do anything. Yeah, you know, this really went awry for Fennel because, you know, he did have a chance to get rid of a grid, but he knew that it was going to be important to resolve one, so he gave himself yeah. a redundant copy, but then he drew another one just off the top of the deck, so kind of awkward for, for Fennel here. Well, he's got free reign here. Well, kind of. He's only got the one defense grid down. So actually, Ochoa can pay two mana, and he's gonna he's gonna remand that yeah, for and five. I mean, it hard counters it. That does not go back to Fidel's hand because that was wow. kind of a flashback. Huge opening for Ochoa, and he takes big advantage of it here. Yeah. And here's a clock down to eleven as Chris Fidel, his Snapcaster Mage, is starting to beat down. Yeah, and Ochoa just says, "Sure, go." Nanomorphos off the top there for Fennel. He almost played it. That, that would be interesting if he chose to play that. I mean, he does need to sandbag something in his hand in case he draws you know, in Ascension. In Ascension or something. Actually wants to try to go off. And he could just go for another grid here. Yeah, I don't hate that at all. Get those shields fully up. Yeah. So right now that would take all of Ochoa's mana <laughs> just to pay for the grids. Again, though, in the meantime, Snapcaster Mage is just sort of happily chipping away. Now, one thing that I, I see, I believe, from Chris Finnell here as well, is I think he's got an empty the wounds in his hand. Is, is that a card that you would expect to see out of the sideboard from him? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's always an Empowerments or Ascension sideboard. Uh, you're really bringing it in when... Usually you're bringing it in when, you're, when you expect your opponent to be bringing in a card like Ley Line of Sanctity or something that prevents you from killing them with a Grave Shot. Uh, sometimes you also just bring it in... Uh, <laughs> wow, like look at this. Condition. We just saw a seven-mana Spell Snare to get the third defense crit from hitting the battlefield. I like it. I like it. This is great. Sometimes five mana roman, seven mana. <laughs> Sometimes the grid stairs. is not not defensive enough. No. That is one thing about Ochoa's deck is you know if he wants he doesn't really have to play spells on his turn at all. He can he can wait, and he's got so much mana that he can actually get away with it. Here's the serum vision, one of his sorceries. David right now showing us what the best defense looks like. Best defense is good offense. Absolutely. That's how it is. I play basketball with you. I know how you think. That's also a magic thing, though. Sure. Well, the defense grid doesn't do anything right now, so Ocho is just sort of churning through his library here with Serum Visions and Snapcaster moves. He's also putting up a really significant clock here. As now all of a sudden Chris can't even crack that flooded strand without dying next turn. Yeah, we see him crack that flood strand. He is uh, planning on winning. Right. Or casting Empty the War. You know, which doesn't do a bad job of <laughs> taking care of these Snapcasters, even without any storm. <laughs> Sometimes you just do what you gotta do, right? All this main phase action here from David Ochoa, it's not something you often see from a Grixis twin deck. 
Yeah, no, he's kind of forced to do, th <laughs> to do he's this. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to cast all these cards on my turn. Yeah, go ahead. Tapped out. You're I mean, you don't really have to be that worried, though, because you know, you're playing against a Storm deck, and your opponent has two cards in their hand. Like, what are they going to do? Two cards in their hand and, and nothing really relevant to the board as it sits. And Finel did, in fact, crack that land. So he's probably just going to empty. He's just going to empty for, for no Storm. The trade. Well, you do what you got to do. Well, he gets to make... Ooh, gets the Manamorphos gets him another couple of goblins and make him some few goblins here. Maybe he'll hit another Manamorphos and turn this into four goblins. Or six goblins, rather. Well, yeah. Passing flames. Passing flames. Not really what the doctor ordered here. But no. with the four mana that he's got, he can make four one ones, and that does stem the bleeding. I mean, you can't figure that that's a, a long term game plan that's going to be super effective, but it'll keep him alive. It will keep him alive, at least for this turn, maybe. There it so is. That is uh, four goblins. It's all just one ones. Usually when you see this deck make goblins, it's making like 20, 12, 20 you know, yeah. 12. It's like a nice, nice number there. All right, Finale's going to pass the turn back to David Ochoa. Oh, Ooh. who has cryptic command, shows it to Finale, says tap your team, maybe draw a card or whatever. And attack for the win. So, Ochoa finds the victory in both game one and game two and takes the match from Finel. Yeah, I mean, David Ochoa showing us that uh, you know, a deck with good disruption is generally very good against Pyromancer Ascension. Uh, Splinter Twin and its variants are not the worst for Pyromancer Ascension, but still not a great place to be. So it looks like that last game, Justin Cohen did use that mana to cast Primal Titan, probably got a, a Slayer Stronghold and just attacked the Kowal for the, for the win. And we find uh, Brian Kowal again, kind of up against it a little bit here with his Dark Confidant and, and Brian at four again. Do they run four drops? Is there something that could just kill him? No, right? Cast uh, I mean, he's probably got Tasker in there. Oh, he Maybe could have he a uh, I don't think he's playing Siege Rhino. Okay, so no force. So no force. All right. And he's at 14. Which helps, apparently. Oh! Yeah. Well, that changes <laughs> the perspective a little. <laughs> things look quite a bit home. better. Just change things doesn't now, how good is a card like Liliana against this amulet deck? Is that is that the thing you want to see if you're the gen player? Uh, I mean, the thing about Liliana that's good when you're playing uh, like Abzan or Jund is that it can make a lot of these bad matchups, like these decks where people can kind of just draw one card off the top and get you. It makes them a lot better because you get people to the point where they're basically out of cards. Yeah. And when people want to do a whole bunch of stuff on one turn, uh, it shuts off their hive mind play. Uh, if you do ever get to ultimate it, which it helps you work toward, uh, then you can really get people's boards. So Slayer Stronghold. What is going on here? He's picking it up. All right. Two for five. And he had him right now floating, so boom, Primeval Titan hits the battlefield here. He's there got the, the Amulet of Vigor on the battlefield as well. And this could be a huge turn for Justin Cohen. He's up a game already against Brian. This is his specialty. I mean, Cohen's a master with this thing. And he knows this deck inside and out. You have to be pretty good at piloting a deck to come second up Pro Tour with it. Especially when it was, what, his first Pro Tour? It may have been his first pro actual tour. first pro tour. Wow, coming in second year first pro tour. It's pretty nice. Not bad. 
Not too bad. How many Pro Tours have, have you played when you won? That's my first Pro Tour. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Just thought I'd lay that one out there for you, Jake. You're Thanks. Welcome. Pitching underhand today. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he settles on Colony Garden in the Simic Growth Chamber, but there's a path to exile with some, some type of triggers on the stack. Justin says, well, while I'm shuffling, I'll stop doing that. Go ahead and grab a basic. I'm going to put it in on tap thanks again to the uh, amulet. Technically, it doesn't come in untapped. No, it, it doesn't not. actually matter here, but it does matter in some cases. Where and there's a battlefield tapped, and there's a trigger that goes on the stack that untaps it. All right, so Path does take care of the big threat here. But we've seen that, you know, sometimes the damage is already done because they'll go get, like, Polaria West and start searching up more packs and more Titans and things can kind of still snowball from here. Having one answer to the first Titan is nice because it means you don't just lose to it, but it often doesn't mean that you're, so you're going to win the game. This amulet deck is surprisingly hard to uh, interact with and, and disrupt. Ancient stirrings in here. I've seen some uh, spreadsheets on the internet talking about all the different uh, lines of play you can oh. take. That's where that's where I get off the train. The uh, you know, I, I watched amulet deck. Yeah, I've seen that with like Doomsday and Vintage and like. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. I don't want to see spreadsheets with, you know, <laughs> yeah, how I'm supposed to play the deck <laughs> like. It does not sound like fun at all. I mean, I quit my job to not look at spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if I'm not at work, those are off the table. It is the deck is more complicated than memorizing a spreadsheet. Of course. I mean, you. That's you just to play around your opponent's that's stuff. That's just to be able to get to that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> just to be able to play it like yeah. passably. Right. This, the, you have to do a lot of work to get to the spreadsheet part of the game. Well, there's a plant token sitting there. Ooh, Path to Exile. For Koal. That's what he revealed to Dark Confidant. Ooh, thinking about dredging a loam here. Wow, he's going deep. Oh, found a ghost quarter. Now he can buy that back with loam. Why don't you, why, why don't you talk loam. About, about life from the loam? That's a card that we see pop up occasionally in modern. What does it do? Okay, so Life from the Loam costs a colorless and a green. It's a sorcery. It returns three target lands from your graveyard back to your Which, hand. Which, by the way, we see him doing right here. Yeah, and then uh, you can dredge it from your graveyard for dredge three. So you can, instead of using your draw step, you can put the top three cards of your deck into your graveyard and instead draw the Life from the Loam from your graveyard. Now, what Life from the Loam does is when you're using a card like Ghost Quarter, uh, if your opponent doesn't have any basic lands left in their deck, then you can just start life from the loaming them every single turn. So Ghost Quarter lets you destroy a land, but they get to search up a basic land of their choice. Exactly. They don't have any. Strip mine. It's just a strip mine. And then you start strip mining people every turn, and eventually you get them to a point where they have no lands in play. Now, at what point does this happen generally for an amulet deck? Basics-wise. Like, are, are we going to see a stream of basic lands flowing out of the list here for Cohen, or is he going to have used those up pretty quickly? Uh, I mean, traditionally, they only play one basic, and it looks like Justin is on just the one forest. That would so be the one that's in his graveyard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these Ghost Quarters are a big deal here. Yeah. Now, I mean, Ghost Quarters is just going to end step here. I imagine it's going to hit a growth chamber. And then... And now he can get it back. Yeah. He, then can, he can dredge life from the dredge. loam, get it back in his hand, mm -hmm. pay two mana, get three lands, including the Ghost Quarter back, play the Ghost Quarter, and hit another land and start just whittling down the mana base of Justin Cole. Yeah, and now, I mean, he, Kowal, he's from Madison. He knows how Amulet Bloom works. Um, he's going to just, instead of drawing a card for his turn, he's going to draw a Stone Rain that costs Paulo City Green yep. every single turn from this point forward. So he really Summer's has pack, this turn. All right, so Pact for Cohen goes into hand. That was a... Teleria West. They got a couple more turns like in his hand. Yeah, right now three of Justin's four lands are Ravnica bounce lands. He's going to need to whittle through those. There's another one with the Gruel Turf here. 
interesting. So Brian's going to use the ghost quarter to take that out with, again, remember when we mentioned this earlier? There's a trigger on the stack with, with Amulet of Vigor. It doesn't actually enter the battlefield tapped. Oh, just that has an extra forest in his sideboard. Really? Yeah. Got him. Yeah. Sometimes you play against ghost quarters. And you need another basic. Yeah. Wow, th this is cool. Now, is that going to slow down Koa? I mean, he, it's one turn that he sort of just downgraded a land there. But yeah, I mean, he still gets to just keep chewing through here. Yeah, right? now he's just going to keep going, though. That's and that not was the last basic there for Cohen. Yeah, that's not the end of Ghost Quarter. And, you know, I really like what Kowal's done here because now he's chipping away from multiple angles, right? Liliana of the Veil is tearing apart Justin Cohen's hand. His life from the Lone Engine is going to start tearing apart his mana base. He must have... Ne oh, so remember when he played the Gruel Turf? Yeah. And Kowal said, okay, well, with the untapped trigger from Amulet of Vigor on the stack, I'm going to Ghost Quarter it. I don't think they ever sorted out which land he was targeting to pick up with it. Because there's two triggers that go on. So it looks like he picked up the other Gruel Turf in this case. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, That's a little awkward. I was a little, they should have yeah. cleared that up uh, a little bit earlier. All right, well, there it is. Life from the Loam, bringing it right back again. Now, Cole's at five here. N not an unrealistic chance, right, that he dies to his Dark Confidant. All right, there's Ghost Quarter, though. What did he just reveal to it? He took so much damage. Uh, he was at five at the start, so I don't know. I think he got a land out of this one. Okay. He keeps chipping away as well with the Dark Confidant. So Cohen's down to ten. Cole had a thought season in his hand. Is that a Hornet Queen he just drew? I believe that is a Hornet Queen. I think he's got one in his in his sideboard. Seems reasonable against these, you know. Attrition y. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you just draw it off the top, cast yeah. it. That wouldn't be my first thought, you know, but now that I think about it, like, how the heck are they going to deal with that? Yeah, there's no way they're going to have a sweeper against you post board. It also blocks their threats, and here's Ghost Quarter. Again, this is so important that Kowal does this with that trigger on the stack because that would give him enough mana, 2, 4, 6, 7. He doesn't have enough with it. So, I mean, <laughs> like, this game is so close. Like, Justin Cohen, if he got to untap that Gruel Turf, boom. Hornet Queen would be a Instead, it's not. So Cohen's going to pick up the forest. And he's going to play a Summer's Pack here. Get a Titan. Two, four, five. And then the mana floated from the forest is six. So he still has just enough to cast Pact and cast Titan. And this could overwhelm the engine that Kowal set up here, right? Yeah. I mean, this is... He was able to power through it. Wow. And Barely. I mean, one more turn yeah. and he would have been off it. That's got to be a frustrating thing if you're Brian Call, though. You know, you, you have this Ghost Quarter engine, which is so good against these land combo strategies. And you assemble it and lose anyway. You activate it three times. Yeah. And you're going to lose anyway. It's pretty rough. And you want to know th what this comes down to, though? What's that? This comes down to Justin Cohen putting an extra forest in his side. Yeah, it really did, didn't yeah. it? Because yeah. if that one just blanked a land, he would be one land down, and he wouldn't have been able to cast a Titan this turn. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Like Brian, Brian Cowell, you know, he was like, well, I'm going to beat that deck. But he didn't expect that deck to have an extra si forest in the sideboard. Wow. And it got him. It has gotten him. So now what happens, though? He's got his Titan. He got a Radiant Fountain. But he can't actually do anything. I mean, can't Koal just kill the Titan here, too? Yeah, I mean, I mean Koal's definitely going to kill this Titan he's somewhere or another. He's still on Plan A here. I like it. I like oh, Plan A. That path to exile. Oh, he's going to ultimate Liliana here. Yeah. Sweet. So what's going to happen is well, they got to make sure they keep track of what's tapped here. Oh, well, 
I suppose it doesn't matter in this scenario. But yeah, what's going to happen is there's going to be two piles formed here by Brian Kowal. Cohen gets to pick one of them. That one's going to go to the graveyard, technically, and the other one he gets to keep. So basically he gets half-ish of his permanence or however Kowal wants to break it down. This is pretty great. Liliana just going off here. And there's there's still the summoner's pact looming. Oh, yeah. So now he can just... Uh, so Kowal sets it up so that he forces him to and take the And then he the can just ghost quarter a green, green source and then kill him with his own pact. <laughs> Love it. Well played, Brian Kowal. This is sweet. Yeah. Now so. ghost quarter. Take out the growth chamber. Beautiful. And pack this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Attack you. It looks like they're getting a little loose. Oh. He let him untap. I think he just missed it. Oh, he missed it. Well, let's see if he gets punished for that. He could have just killed the like growth chamber there, yeah, right? Yeah, he could have just. And he's just dead on his up the growth chamber, and then he would be able to paper pack. All right. Well, let's see if he can. Uh, I mean, there's no way Justin Cohn can come back from this, though, right? I mean, his confidant could kill him. <laughs> oh yeah, it totally could. <laughs> he didn't go quarter. Wow, he, he has hit a few lands in a row here, though, because Koa is running good. <laughs> He needs a bigger threat. Does he have a... He has no lands that can attack either. All right, now he's going to go his quarter. Get, get it back again. Attack for two. Remember, the amulet of vigor is no longer around. That, that yeah, that's went, gone. That went into the graveyard thanks to Liliana and her ultimate. He's crack a fetch there. Looks like he did. Down to four. He needs a like a land that can attack or a scavenging news or something. Got another Liliana here, it looks like. Liliana also uh, combos quite nicely with uh, Life and Alone. He, he could also use it to get rid of his Dark Confidant, right? Uh, I believe so. I think yeah. you can target yourself with Liliana. I think I've done that before, but quick double check. Yeah, it's target player. Yeah. So, you know, I if he hits like a three ball here, he can go into panic mode and <laughs> get rid yeah. of it. Thrag Tusk here for Justin Cohen. That's a pain to deal with. I think Brian just has like path to exile. Oh, I mean, does still, he have one? Give him a, we give him a three. I feel like if he was just main phasing this ghost quarter the whole game, Justin would have just never been able to do anything. It does feel like that. I, I feel that same way. Uh, now Down to one is Koal. Uh oh. So Th that's not on one. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, will be on two, though, I imagine. Here comes life. Okay, so he's dedicated to his engine here, and now he's going to main phase it. Yeah. Main phases it, gets the gets the green source. No longer fight for some respect. That time he saw it. All right. So we're going to get a game free. three. Woo. That was some Tight intense one. stuff. We saw a lot yeah. of crazy stuff. We saw Justin Cohen survive through Ghost Quarter Life from the Loam for like six turns and still managed to add things to the board. Yeah. We saw I mean, the Liliana there some Ultimate. Pretty, there were a bunch of missed opportunities there from uh, VK's angle. And I think that uh, as, he, uh, as he plays the deck a little more, he probably realized like that maybe he hasn't well, played against Amulet Bloom with those combinations of cards yet. And... Uh, I did see a light head shake there from, from Kowal. You know, the, the one maybe that says, oh, I could have done that before, couldn't I? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. You know, those he are the is things well that dawn on you right, right after yeah, when you're yeah. like, oh, right. <laughs> also, sometimes, you know, you uh, sometimes you eat the bear, <laughs> sometimes the bear eats you, you know. <laughs> is it lunchtime already? <laughs> 
is more of a which is actually also part of the country I think, relevant to uh, what Dark Confidant was doing there. Mm. Sometimes the Bob eats you. <laughs> 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 All right, so players uh, almost ready for game three. Hopefully, it's as good as game two was. That was great. Yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> that was super sweet. But I Kowal ultimately finding the win there. Yeah. So Justin Cohen uh, mulligan six lands in a Premier Titan. Didn't see what Kowal. But he didn't like it either. Yeah, I think it, it looked like it might have been a one-lander. So uh, here, when we look at these two deck lists here, I think uh, you know, Brian Cole certainly trying to uh, find Knight of the Reliquary and the combination of Life from the Loam with Ghost Quarter. Those okay. are really his his best routes to victory here. So he, he can use deck. the Knight to search up the, the Ghost Quarter to get that loop flowing as long as he has the... Precisely. Uh, and then he the also has Abrupt Decay and uh, maybe other cards that actually deal with Amulet. Yeah. So, so that buys him time. Yeah, he, he's definitely got some action here. The thing about the... Uh, Ooh. Oof. The action is taking a hit here, though. He's going down to five cards. Yeah, the, the thing about Amulet, though, is that uh, even though it's like this kind of super linear combo deck, it's attacking from enough angles where sideboarding against it is pretty difficult. You know, like you find yourself wanting to leave Path Exile in to kill the Primeval Titan. Uh, but then how are you going to beat Hive Mind combo? You know, so you're citing in these cards that might just be dead cards, depending on your opponent's mm -hmm. plan, or leaving them in, rather. And it makes Amulet a really difficult deck to mulligan against. Uh, a lot of the time, I just keep basically any hand that would have been a keeping game, like game one looks. It's, uh, it's interesting. All right. Brian Kowal down to five. Come on, you got to have the keeper. No, he doesn't. He's going to four. Jeez. This is pretty brutal. I saw, I thought I saw a Knight of the Relic going to land there. That'd be good enough for you? Five? Yeah, I mean, it's like, what are you getting? That costs costs one, that? two, or three mana, right? Yeah. Well, he didn't see what he liked, so he's shifting that thing back, and we're going down to four cards here. You know, there, there could be an argument to be made for the fact that because Justin Mulligan on the play, Having a single Thoughtseize may buy Brian like an incredible amount of time because his opponent's on Amulet. So maybe he's just looking for. And he's got a Thoughtseize here. I don't think he has a black mana source. He's turning Wildwood on turn one here. Nothing though for Cohen in the first two turns, so this is good news for Kowal, who finds his Ghost Quarter, though he can't really afford it here. Yeah, I mean, this Ghost Quarter is. It would have been much better just as a black source at the stage of the game. He needs to remember, he's on four cards here. Good ghost quarter himself. No, oh, no, and here's Amulet of Vigor plus a bounce land. And Kowal says, yeah, I guess I just got to get rid of that thing. That's kind of rough. That's rough because he's just downgrading it to a forest. Oh, nothing from Brian Kowal. Such a sweet game, too. Yeah. And the mulligan to four here looks like it might be his undoing. Let's see if uh, Cohen can find more action. Copies a gemstone mine and sends it back, so he's up to four mana now. Interesting. So. What, he just didn't untap it? He never returned to land. So they did the same thing like in. in uh, in, in the second game, remember when Justin Cohen had his land? Uh, he had an amulet. He played a bounce land. It got ghost quartered with the amulet trigger on the stack, but they forgot for a, at least a, a sequence to return a land to his hand. Mm -hmm. That same thing happened here. It's awkward. It is awkward. Because that was last turn. Yeah, so I mean, but you Justin, know. you know. Basically, what happens is he picks up the Vesuva, which was copying Gemstone Mine, and he would have just played the Forest anyway. Now he gets to keep that Vesuva in his hands. Okay. 
Uh, there's a swamp now, though, for Brian Cole off of a marsh flat. So thought sees it is. And Justin Cohen shows him a Thrag Tusk, a Primeval Titan, a Summer's Pack, I believe, in there. There's definitely a Slaughter Pack. It's absolutely a Slaughter yeah. Pack. And, a Vesu and the Vesuva that we knew about. So what the heck is Brian taking here? I think he takes Titan? Slaughter Pact. Oh, just take the Slaughter Pact? Yeah, I mean, the... Oh, it's a Thought Seize. I thought it was an Inquisition. I'm sorry. No, it's a Thought Seize. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you Thrag okay. Tusk seems like the best pick then. Okay, because that's because the earliest he could just, threat. Yeah, he, he, could, he could draw a Bounce Land and then just cast this next Which, turn. Which, by the way, he just did. Yeah. <laughs> he drew Simic Growth Chamber, so... Tap it, bounce it, pick it up. And yeah, I mean, this means that he doesn't have to face down a Thrag Tusk now. Yeah, that was pretty clutch there for him. He just drew a Liliana. He just drew a Ghost Quarter, which is insane for him in this well, spot. He, he drew a Life from the Loam to get him the Ghost Quarter, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and Did he now, just turn the corner Yeah, here? he turned the corner. So this is awesome. The fact that he, he mulliganed a four. He he's mulliganed a four. Is he going to win this he's, game? I think he's going to win this game. Like, what's, what's Justin supposed to do right, here? Right, because he can't under get up to six. And now, Kowal's using his ghost quarters during his main phase. Yeah, he is. You know, he's like, oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and interestingly, once he chews down all the lands from Cohen, he, he's going to also be able to now hit his own land drops. You know, we, we yeah. talk about different forms of card advantage, and, you know, Life from the Loam is a form of card advantage that gets you, you yeah. know, you can drop to three cards per turn off of it. The so problem is they're I'm lands. I'm going to blow your mind for a second here. All right, here. do it. Uh, when Life from the Loam got printed yeah. shortly after that and extended, yeah. uh, there were many people who referred to it as the best card draw spell, legal and extended. Oh, interesting. That's what it was called. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But, the, <laughs> but the thing about it is, is that it's not just straight up drawing cards, right? You do need to be able to leverage either having more lands or something to do with the lands. You know, we've seen a uh, few different types of decks pop up around that. And this is one of the ways you can do that is with Ghost Quarter. But here, he just needs lands too, right? Yeah. Like, he's going to need to cast some spells at, at some point during the course of this game. And when you're on four, that's a great way to catch up. And Justin passes a turn back. Whoa, BK, easy, buddy. <laughs> but he's going to draw his card for the turn. <laughs> but he'd much rather have this life from the loam and get yeah. this thing going. Oh, they're in extra uh, turns. Oh, no. That game took so long. And even though Brian looks like he is going to have full control here. He's well, Justin may just scoop it up. I mean, they're both talk, Madison talk to, guys. Talk to us about you know. that. Well, no, talk to us about that. So, I mean, I taking a draw home. this early in a tournament is very similar to just taking a loss. Okay. They're from the same area. You uh, mean they might be friends? Yeah. They, I think... They might be neighbors. Okay. Uh, like I know Justin Cohen's roommate was like in Brian Cole's wedding party. Like you mean you know, Sam Black? Sam Black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like they they definitely know who each other are. Now, but what is that? What does that matter? If I'm sitting at home and I don't play in GPS, who who cares if they know each other? Why why is that a thing? Well, I mean they they want each other to do well. You know. And so it's better as a group if one of them says, "Okay, I think you're going to win this game. I'll concede." Yeah, I mean, it's also just, you know, you're, you're running out of time. Like, if, if the game was able to progress as it naturally would have, then... Who, who would win if they yeah. can determine that kind of thing? All right. Well, there's Leyline of Sanctity, but... Might be too late for that. This is this is turn five. So we, we will not see a natural conclusion here as far as giving us a winner. I am curious to see what they do. Looks like a pair of Abrupt Decays in hand for Koal. Maybe he'll just... Oh, he's just going to play the Knight of the Reliquary here. I, you know, maybe he's just showing him, look, I did have a threat. I can close this game out yeah. relatively quickly. Like right now, that Knight of the Reliquary is like a 5-5. Five -five. Yeah, now he can just, you know, kill and a then that's forest it. and... So we'll try to get uh, an update from our spotter as to what happens at the end there. Well, maybe we can just watch him sign the slip here, too. Yeah, so that's actually... They might be working out right now. Well, well, how does this actually play out? Because, you know, if Justin's convinced that he, there's no way he could win this game, then, yeah, he might just say, okay, I'm going to give this one to you. But if yeah. Justin, you know, brings up a point and says, now, hold on a minute. There's some cards you didn't remember. 
that I could have drawn here that would have given me the win potentially, and so I'd rather not, you know, give up a loss to you here. Mm -hmm. But I think they're actually talking about that right now. They're signing the slip, but there's there's more work to be done here. No, no, they're taking the draw. All right, well, it looks like they couldn't quite, uh, you know, sort out exactly. I mean, it, it can be really hard to say exactly who would win a game. Sometimes it's like, I, I'm going to attack you next turn and kill you, and other times it can get a little more complicated. All right, well, that's going to do it for round four here from Oklahoma City. And welcome back to the booth here. No, I feel like I'm not in the middle. There we go. Welcome back to the booth. We got a deck tech with uh, Brian Cole actually lined oh, up awesome. here. Yeah, that was super exciting stuff. Um, yeah, you know, for, really for the cool round. Deck. Really cool, really exciting match. Little disappointed about that last game that we didn't get a little more time. To, like, yeah, because I was, I, I was Cole like, had, oh, had him locked. Well, and he had more four. turns. He yeah. did, right? Like, that's yeah, he can just, that's he how can just do it every up. single turn, and then yeah. he just Justin has no lands left. Yeah. And like he can even just start, like he would just start targeting things that weren't gemstone mines. And then, you know, if Cohen even taps those lines, he just starts stone uranium himself. It, the game was over. Yeah. But ah, it's a tough one. It's rough. Mulligan of Foreign, he actually got there too. Mulligan of Foreign, yeah, he so probably would have won. We've got a lot of uh, stuff lined up for you in between rounds. We're going to start off with a Brian Kowal deck tech. So you're going to get a chance to 